All right, kiddos, it is that time. Right now I'm doing more. By doing nothing. That's what I'm going to talk about today. In case you don't know me, uh, how are you watching this? I don't understand. You probably found me on YouTube or on LinkedIn or something like that. Yeah. Well, my name is Fred Moore, productivity expert and bald guy. Today we're talking about how to do more by doing nothing. It makes no sense, does it? But that's okay. I'm going to make it make sense. I was reading an article the other day. Yes, I can read. I was raised right. I can read about how you need to take a break. How you, matter of fact, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to, is it, the article is why your brain needs more downtime. I'm actually going to even put a link to the article in to the comments. There it is. It's right there in the chat. You can read it for yourself, but uh, you don't have to because I'm going to tell you. Your brain needs more downtime because when you're working on a task, it, you, all right, you think here's the scenario, right? If I work 45 minutes on something, uh, maybe I'll get some good work done. But if I buckle down and I really kind of push and I work like three hours straight, I don't take a break. I don't go to the bathroom. I just push, 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 push. I'm going to get really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this thing done. It's going to be awesome. Probably not. Why? Because your brain is not wired that way. All right. Three hours of constant information or output, output, whatever it is, your brain gets muddled and your productivity actually decreases. I know you're doing something, but what you're doing, the product, the, the thing itself is, is decreasing. It's it, the quality of it is decreasing. You're not doing better work. You're doing poorer work. Is that a word? Worser work. It's not that good. That's what I'm trying to say. Cause your brain needs a break. It needs to snap out of what it's doing. I mean, your attention span tends to be, what? Your attention span is growing shorter and shorter. So when you're doing this task, even if you're passionate about it, I mean, I can be working on something, I'm working on my website or working on some copy and I'm, I wanna get it perfect. It's that whole perfectionism thing. And it just, I don't take a break, I get it. And then I end up with something that could be a whole lot better if I just taken a few moments to step back, right? You can be too close to the problem at times and, and you can't see the mistakes or the things that shouldn't be there. So you, you need to take a little break. You need to give your brain some downtime. Well, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm glad you asked. First thing, take mini breaks, right? I've talked about this before working in productivity blocks of time where I will schedule 50, 45 to 50 minutes where I'm working and then an alarm goes off and says, stop, stop what you're doing. And then another task engages automatically right after that. It's break time. Take a break. 10, 15 minutes, get up, walk around. Then that alarm goes off in 10 or 15 minutes to let me know. I was like, all right, get back to work. Because, you know, those breaks can turn into longer and not mini breaks anymore. They're macro breaks. Really long breaks is what I'm saying. You don't want to do that. So yeah, just schedule in these mini breaks and schedule them. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to take a break when I'm ready. No, no. Schedule the breaks, okay? If you've got a doctor's appointment scheduled, you're going to stop what you're doing because uh, I'm going to get going. Uh, the doctor's appointment is coming up soon. Mini break. Do it. Schedule it. Next, you uh, cr create some buffer time in between your tasks. If you work like me and you schedule things on your calendar so they get done, I mean, if you have a work environment, obviously you need to do certain hours, you need to work certain hours, but schedule in there some buffer time because maybe this thing that you're working on and maybe like, okay, well, I'm going to give myself 45 minutes to do this. That's not always practical. If it's something that has a deadline, right? If it's something that needs to get done, it doesn't matter if that, oh, the alarm went off. Fred told me, sorry, boss, I'm fired. What do you mean I'm fired? It may take some more time. So anytime I'm doing some, some big tasks that I'm guesstimating how much time it's going to take me to do, I will schedule in some buffer time in between the big tasks. So let's say I'm going to work on my website uh, or, or no, I need to create a uh, custom video proposal for a client, which I'll do. 
somebody wants to hire me for a keynote or somebody wants to bring me into their company to run a, a program for the next three months to help increase their productivity, I'm going to create a proposal page, which lays out everything. Now, this is something that I can't just throw it out there and see what happens. It's, it's got to be really good. Well, if I have that scheduled for two hours and then right after that, a little 15 minute break, then I have like, you know, I have to do a live stream and I have to do this. Well, those are going to butt up. And if I'm not done, but I need to get it done, I might have to cancel that. I might have to change that. So I'll, I'll buffer in there like half an hour, half an hour, and it'll be tasks, easy tasks, like I uh, check the email, the, something I can blow off if I, if, if I want to, right? Something I can just go, well, I don't need to do that right now because this is more important. But that's my buffer time. See, that's my buffer time. So if it does go over, uh, then I don't have to panic. I don't have to worry about it. Because once you it butts into the next thing, then that gets delayed. Then, then, then that gets delayed. If you've been in a doctor's waiting room after 11 o'clock in the morning, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because the... 20 patients beforehand were all five minutes late, which accumulated. And now you're sitting there waiting for your 11 o'clock appointment and you maybe get in at 1.30. Yeah, that just happened to my wife yesterday. All right, finally, uh, schedule nothing time. Yeah, this is kind of like that break time. Not like the buffer time, but I'm talking about schedule a time in your day. Try to do it at least once a day where you are going to do absolutely nothing nothing. You're not going to check your email. You're not going to work on anything. You're not going to talk on the phone. You're not going to watch videos. You're going to do nothing. Try to do this in a place that's maybe quiet, that's free of distractions, or if, if there are distractions, let them be good distractions. You know, go outside, take a look at the lake, at the trees, even if you're staring at the fence in your backyard, like at my house. If you're sitting there doing nothing and you don't have your phone, maybe a cup of coffee, a glass of tea, whatever, 15, 20, 30 minutes if you can do it, and just sit there and think. Just think. Don't think about any particular thing. Just let your mind go. It's going to give your brain that chance to go, okay, everything that happened today, yeah, okay. And you're going to start thinking of things. And I might have a notebook to write down ideas. I'm not going to act on those ideas, but I'm going to record them because if I don't, I'll forget them. And I'll be like, I had a great idea at my nothing time yesterday, and I have no idea what it is. Hopefully, I'll get that idea again today. I don't know if I will or not. But yeah, so I have a notebook, but I'm not going to be checking my phone. I'm not, it's silent. I, I'll put up maybe a timer on my phone. That's about it. That's all I'm going to do with the phone. All right. Three simple things that you can do. Mini breaks, right? Schedule the buffer time. And this one here, schedule some nothing time. That's what I would advise you to do to get more done by doing this nothing. If you do want to get some more stuff done, maybe you want to get five hours back in your week. What concept, right? There's where you go. Five hours back.com. The number five hours back.com. Com. There you will find a PDF that is yours for free, gratis, no dinero. Take it, go run with it. You can use it all you want. Nine tips that will help you save a few minutes here and there throughout your week, which will add up to at least five hours back in your week. Five hours that you can either use to get more work done or maybe use some of that five hours to do nothing and enjoy it. All right. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys later. Hey, let me check the comments real quick. Uh, hi, Bob Schmidt. Bob Schmidt is watching my high school teacher. You have no idea the influence you had on me. No idea. A good influence, by the way. Yeah. 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 Good to see you on here, Bob. I got to go. Otherwise we chit chat some more, but all right. Keep an eye out for more videos like this on Facebook. Uh, share it with your friends if they want to get more time back. You can check it out on YouTube. I'm gonna be. This is gonna be on LinkedIn. Do me a favor. Just share this with all of your friends, your enemies, those people that you're connected with. Help them get some time back too. I am out of here. See ya.